famous hadith that is mentioned and repeated all the time on social media, on the pulpits. Even say the Sistani has a fatwa where he says it's it's actually that deep, that deep. And you know, usually by the time you get to this line, everyone's like, Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So why are we even narrating it on social media? Why are we saying it on, on the pulpits? What is the reason for it? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Inshallah you are all in the best of health. Inshallah today we will be discussing a very important hadith. A hadith that is very popular. Very famous. A hadith that is always mentioned on the pulpits. We want to discuss whether it is authentic. Whether we can actually attribute it to the Imam inshallah. But before we do that, I do want to discuss something that is very important, which is Why am I doing such videos? Why am I discussing such topics? So the reason why it's very important that we discuss such topics is because when you have a very popular, famous hadith that is mentioned and repeated all the time on social media, on the pulpits we must be very careful to what we accept, what we take, and can we really attribute it to the Imam or not? This is very important because we are in the time of ghaybah. Our Imam is in occultation. We can't go to him to tell us to if this is authentic or not. We have to have an academic standard to know what we can actually attribute to our Imams and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or not. This is very important. Just a small, I don't want to get too much about this, um, you know, why am I doing this video, this topic, but because I want to actually start to discuss the hadith itself. But just quickly, so Ali bin Babawai, the father of Shaykh al-Saduq, in his uh, Al-Imam al-Tabsara, he says, with a Sahih chain, from Abdullah bin Ja'far al-Hamyari, uh, from Ayyub, an Ayyub bin Nuh, and Muhammad bin Abi Umair, and Jamil bin Darraj, and Zurara, qala, qala Abu Abdullah alayhi salam, so Imam al-Sadiq, so Zurara is narrated from Imam al-Sadiq, Yati ala nasi zamanun yaghibu anhum imamahum, there will come a time for the people where the Imam is not there, he's not present among them. So Zurara says, فَقُلْتُ لَهُ and I said to him, ما يصنع الناس في ذلك الزمان? What will the people do? What should they do in a time like that? The Imam is not there. قال يتمسكون بالأمر الذي هو عليه حتى يتبين لهم That they will hold on to the matter that they was upon until things become apparent to them. So it could be said that the Imam reappears. So we have to hold on to the Torah of Ahlul Bayt But then we need to see what is the Torah of Ahlul Bayt? What can we actually attribute to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt This is very important. And that we do not lie against Allah and His Messenger and the Imams السلام. Even say the Sistani has a fatwa where he says that if you attribute that which cannot be attributed to the Imam, or the Prophet, or Allah, in Shah Ramadan, your fast is void. It's, it's actually that deep, that deep. So we have to be very careful. So the hadith that we want to discuss is the hadith, um, hadith al-haqiqah. Now I don't want to make this video too long by, um, you know, narrating the whole hadith. You know, it's the hadith, whatever, um, it's the hadith of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam where he tells some of the secrets to Kumail bin Ziyad. So where he says to him, I will only mention the first few parts and then I'll leave the rest of it in the description inshallah. He says, what is truth? The Imam says, what do you have to do with the truth? He says, are you not the door to God's secret? Am I not your companion of secrets? So he says, oh Kumail, whatever sprinkles in you overflows in me. 
And you know, usually by the time you get to this line, everyone's like, Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. By the way, um, forgive me for the background. The, I don't know, the book, uh, the library is in a bit of a mess. But usually, yeah, when we get to the stage, everyone's Salawat. Because everyone likes a bit of mystery and what's going on and why is this happening and so on. So it's very interesting. It's a, usually people like things that they do not understand. It makes them, you know, oh, what's going on? And you'll see what I'm trying to say as I go on. Now, it's important to know, none of our classical books of hadith mention this hadith. None. The earliest source is by a scholar by the name of Sayyid Haydar al-Amili, an 8th century scholar, and his book, Jami' al-Asrar wa Manba' al-Anwar. Okay, first person. Before that, we don't know who, who narrated it. Where did it come from? Now, by the way, all of this research is, um, I've taken it from um, the works of uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Jawad. Um, he's one of the scholars of Qum. Um, he specializes in hadith. Um, and I spoke to him about this uh, hadith itself. Now, some of the stuff that I'm putting on is from myself, but as in the foundations of this video or the research of this video is by Sheikh Ibrahim Jawa. It's very important that I mention that. Now, another person that narrates it is um, Al Majlisi, Al Majlisi Al Awwal, so the father of Al Allam Al Majlisi, in his book Rawdat Al Muttaqeen. So, Rawdat Al Muttaqeen is a commentary on Man La Yahdharahu Al Faqih. So he, and then after him, it's Na'matullah al-Jazari. Okay, so his student in Nur al-Barahim. Okay, he mentions it as well. Now, there are other um, scholars that have mentioned this hadith in, in other works and so on. Um, now, it's very important to mention something. So not only the earliest source is an 8th century scholar, but we don't even have a chain. So there's no chain. The first time it's mentioned in a book is 8th century, 7th century, let's say. Nothing before that. Not found in the classical works either. So it's Mursal, disconnected. So even, even by the standard of Ilm al-Hadith and so on, you can't even attribute it to the Imam. Now there is also a book that's attributed to Al-Allam al-Halli, where he has, where apparently he has a commentary on Hadith al-Haqiqah. Um, except that you cannot really attribute it to Al-Allam Al-Halli. Reason being, um, Agha Buzurg Al-Tahrani, okay, in his Al-Dhari'ah, volume 13, page 196, he says, what is apparent, rather what is for sure, is the attribution is a lie. As it becomes clear for anyone who has any recognition of Al-Allam's words, so Al-Allam Al-Halli, and his style, particularly that the biographies of his works are present and validated. And there is no trace of this book. So from scholars that came, because you, you need to remember, Alam al-Halli is a very famous scholar of his time. So his books will be, um, now not all of his books reached us, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, not all of them reached us. But... He's a famous scholar. So many of his uh, um, books, the scholars are, you know, uh, passing it on and so on. So it's not something that we don't know. And one of the important things when it comes to books, for example, Tasheeh Al-Atiqadat by Sheikh Al-Mufid. We know Sheikh Al-Mufid um, wrote this book, for example. And one of the main reasons that the scholars say, says, is very, very clear. These are the words of Al-Mufid. You look at all of his other works, it's the same style, same type of wording, same type of style, because every scholar has a unique way. And when you look at this book attributed to Al-Alam Al-Halli, that has no trace or anything, it can't be, you cannot say, nor can you see it in the, um, the scholars that mention the books of Al-Alam Al-Halli, which books did he uh, write? They don't mention this. So that's why Agha Buzurg Al-Tahrani basically is negating it. Okay, um, I say even if Al Alam Al Hilli did a commentary on it, okay, 
no problem. But for us, we definitely can't prove it. Now, even if Al-Alam Al-Hilli did a commentary on it, could it be said that even Al-Alam Al-Hilli didn't have a chain for it? Or did he not? Allah Al-Alam. But generally speaking, the book is under scrutiny. The hadith, that the way it got to us, can't be proven. So we can't really attribute it to the imam in any shape or form. Now, you know, sometimes you get a hadith that's found in our classical works. It has no chain. But it's just like, okay, um, the rhythm of it is like, and the, the wording is very similar to that which the imams say in the same style. So you'll be like, okay, in that sense, you can't just reject. You just say, okay, maybe I can't apply it. There's not enough proof for me to apply it from an um, academic standpoint. Okay. Now, let's see what Taqil Majlisi says about it. Now, it's interesting because Taqil Majlisi actually mentions it in his Rawdat al Muttaqin and he seems to accept it. Okay. So he mentions it, uh, he mentions in volume three, page 121. He says, with absolute exaggeration on the clarification of what the likes of Kumail, who is among the companions of secrets. So how can others claim? So how can others claim to understand it, basically? And understand the realities of these reports and its kind. It is not easy for the weak minds. So it's not easy for the weak minds to understand it. So even Al-Alam Al-Awwal, Al-Alam Al-Majis Al-Awwal, He's saying it. He's saying you can't understand it. For the weak mind. So why are we even narrating it on social media? Why are we putting it on pulpits? Why are we saying it on, on the pulpits? What is the reason for it? What are we trying to achieve with such things? Why are we doing things where the people don't really understand it? And I've seen it before. When, you know, when the... The lecturer will start to mention this hadith. Allah, salawat. Okay, relax. Did the imam say it? Because people like mysterious things. But I said, okay, Mumushkila like mysterious things, but did the imam say it? So inshallah ta'ala, let us be the people of proof and evidences. Not people of hawa, people of desires, where we're just accepting anything. Oh, it feels good. Whatever oh, sprinkles in you, overflows in me. Well, what does that mean? There can be a million different uh, explanations to this. There is a actual. There's actual hadith where Imam Ali Ali Islam found in our classical works where he talks to uh, Kumail bin Ziyad about hakika reality. Why not narrate that? It's found in Nahjil Balagha Volume Two. It's hadith um, 147 or in some versions of Nahjil Balagha 146. Al-Khisal narrates it. Um, Ibn Shu'ba in his Tuhaf al-Uqul. Um, also in Kamal al-Din, he mentions it. A few of the um, Sunni scholars mention Al-Bayhaqi and so on. So there's a few of them that mention the hadith or the, um, the actual hadith that there's a higher probability that you can attribute to the imam. And when I say higher, it's because um, there's a, obviously a discussion of Sanad and so on. But generally speaking, that is a beautiful hadith. The hadith itself talks about reality, knowledge, this life and so on. So why are we attributing to the imam things that we can't attribute? But then there is somewhat re similar narration where it talks about the reality of things. And reality and al-haqiqa. Why not narrate that? Why not narrate the one that talks about reality and so on. But you can actually find it in classical sources. My brothers and sisters, please. We have to be people of truth. People of proofs and evidences. Not hawa. Yeah, sure, whatever sprinkles in you, overflows in me, feels good and it's mysterious. I get it. It's nice. It's a nice feeling. But it's, this religion is not about feeling. It's about what's truth 
and then making sure that your feelings are in line and reflect the truth. That's what's more important. So let us not attribute that which cannot be attributed to the Imam. Inshallah Ta'ala, we have benefited. Um, forgive me for my, uh, sometimes I get a bit passionate. Um, but inshallah, uh, do remember me in your du'as. I need your du'as in the no next few weeks. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, we can all come together and become people that investigate these things. And not allow the pulpits and people on social media to just spread things that cannot be attributed to the imam. Hada wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytihi tayyibina tahirin.